I'm in Shenandoah National Park, and this is Hawksbill Gap. This is mile marker 45. There's Skyline Drive. There's a lot of parking here on both sides because it's po real popular. There's on the other side. I'm parked on this side right here. Yep, there's my little red car. I'm gonna close that up and head over here to the trailhead and study the information sign for a second and then head up this way and we're going to hang a left up here and we're going to hike up to the summit of Hawksbill. That's the tallest peak uh, in Shenandoah National Park. It's a little over 4,000 feet. The elevation here is 3360. <clears throat> All right, so you don't get confused. There's two ways to go here. That's the way I'm going to be coming back. Uh, and if you study this signpost, you'll see that you want the Appalachian Trail, which is this way. couple hundred yards into my hike. This is the intersection with the Appalachian Trail. The parking lot's up there. So you come down this little connector trail and uh, take a left. We're going to hike south along the AT. That's the AT heading north. I can see a white blaze on a tree up there. Uh, it's not marked on this signpost, but if you head down that way, that takes you down into Timber Hollow. Now that's an abandoned road down there, but that's a good bushwhack. I have a video on that. Timber Hollow, I think it's called. And anyway, we're gonna take a left and hike south along the AT for a mile or so until we hit the intersection with the Salamander Trail. Three tenths of a mile into my hike, I'm up to uh, 3,480 feet. I'm still climbing the mountain on, <clears throat> along the Appalachian Trail. That's where I came from. And just a couple of uh, just a couple of notes. The view from up here in the winter time, when all this you have to imagine all this vegetation's died down to nothing. And there's the next mountain peak over there. And this is Timber Hollow down here. The view down through here would be pretty, pretty spectacular in the wintertime. And then out that way is the uh, Shenandoah Valley. So if you, if you hike this in the wintertime, you should be in for some pretty good views. Now there aren't a whole lot of flowers right here where I'm standing. I took some pictures though along the way. There's a huge amount of stuff flowering right now. It's starting to it's starting to cool down up here some now from the summer peak temperatures. <clears throat> and uh, 
a lot of these things are flowering and so there's a lot of butterflies and bees out here right now as a matter of fact there's a butterfly there's a butterfly right there maybe you can see it right there see that butterfly so mostly bees there's a whole lot of bees up here buzzing around collecting pollen but there's a uh, there's a, a butterfly I don't know what they're all called but then there's another one a black there's a one that's mostly a black with kind of an iridescent purple color Rock slide area. <sighs> when they created the AT here, they had to move a bunch of them. I guess they threw them over the side here because it continues on down that way. Here's another rock slide area. Maybe you can see the average slope here. I'm holding the camera basically level now. Maybe a 45 degree slope. And that big rock right there in the middle of the trail looks like it. Uh, I haven't been up this trail for a long time, but that I don't remember that rock being there last time I was here. So that has that has slid down over the years. There's some right up there getting ready to slide down. I'm standing in the middle of the rock slide. There's a, there's a look over to the western side of the mountain. Down there's a the timber hollow. Uh, that's where it came from. And I'm heading, continuing on this way into the green tunnel. I think this is the third rock slide area. Uh, it goes way up there. Behind me, I'm going to say those two big, big rocks somewhere along the line many, many moons ago slid down and landed right there. <laughs> and they're too big to move without like dynamite and stuff. So here we go, onward and upward. Let's see. I am <clears throat> six tenths of a mile into my hike and I'm up to 3,620 feet. One point one miles into my hike. I'm up to uh, 3,600 feet, heading to 4,000. <clears> but uh, we come to the left. This is the Salamander Trail. Uh, we're going to take a detour first, but when I come back to here, we'll go up this trail. This, is, this takes you all the way up uh, uh, to the summit, Hawksbill Summit. There's the AT continuing south. 
here's where I came from along the AT and that sound over there is some uh, some kind of turkey fight anyway you might notice there's a little bit of a trail right there that heads over uh, hidden from view past the turkey fight up on the summit over there that's called naked top uh, that's a that's at a good hike but there's nothing to see up there at the top and it's a bushwhack from here all the way to the top but that that's a fun hike that's a bushwhack and uh, we're going to continue on this way south on the AT and go visit the rock spring uh, hut it's not that far from here maybe uh, half a mile One point three miles into my hike. The elevation here is thirty five hundred feet. <clears throat> That's where I came from along the AT. Uh, and this is the intersection with a uh, <clears throat> road, an access road right there that goes down the side of the mountain to Skyline Drive. This is a little turnaround spot. And then this is the purpose of this is to provide access to this hut that that we're headed to, which is this way. Just past that access road heading south is this signpost. There's the AT and we're going to turn off this way and head down the side of the mountain a little ways to to the Rock Spring hut. One point five miles into my hike, I'm down to uh, thirty-four hundred feet elevation, and uh, this is the Rock Spring Hut. <clears throat> There's also down the hill a little further is the Rock Spring Cabin. I'll show you that too. In uh, Shenandoah terminology, the huts these are actually the huts. These are open. This is for overnight AT through hikers. Uh, to bunk in and then down there so that's a hut and then down here out of view right now is the rock spring cabin that's a regular log cabin I'll show you that when we get down there that can be rented out from the PATC Potomac Appalachian Trail Club <clears throat> those are fairly new that's a bear proof uh, food locker before those you had to put your food up on one of these bear poles. There's one right there. Let me get a little closer. So there's a bear pole. You'd hang your uh, food bags up on those hooks. That cone-shaped thing <clears throat> uh, is probably up there to try and stop raccoons or squirrels from getting up there. Only thing is, raccoons can, uh, can climb pretty, pretty good. <laughs> um, but anyway, those got replaced by those bear-proof food lockers. All right, I climbed up here. This is where the uh, 
outhouse is. It's one of the uh, new technology composting type. They, uh, the composting crib down there is twice as wide as the outhouse and uh, every so often they slide it from one side to the other. And then the side that's being composted <clears throat> has that little roof on it. And they periodically stir it up and stuff. And my understanding is after about a year's worth of composting, it's safe to just spread out on the ground. Now, con you contrast that to here's where the old outhouse was, right there. And then over there behind that was another one. Probably one of them filled up and they covered it and then they built, drug another hole and then this got covered. And now we have that. And down there is the hut. And up here, up this way on this hill, are a whole bunch of uh, campsites. Um, maybe you can see that, maybe you can see that one post right there in the middle of the screen. They're designated like that. So, there you go. One point six miles into my hike, I'm down to thirty three sixty, and this is the Rock Spring cabin. <clears throat> this is a real nice place to uh, rent out for a night or two. You can rent it from PATC. It's a primitive cabin. There's no water, no electricity. Uh, you have to go gather your own firewood, uh, which can take a while because this place has been pretty pretty cleared out of of uh, you know blow, blown down stuff. Um, up that hill is the ash pit, <clears throat> and also up there, maybe you can see, there is a, there's a separate outhouse for people to rent the cabin out. It's locked. So, real nice, real nice place. Oh, uh, well, let's, I'm going to jiggly camera here. Sorry about that, but it's, it's really rocky. I'll show you in a second. When you get up here, uh, <clears throat> you got your picnic table. You got this is an out outdoor fireplace, and then there is a uh, there's a wood burning stove inside. Oh look, a little bit of firewood left over. So when my brother and I rented this place, we sat out here. It was kind of cold at night. We sat out here, and in the winter time with no leaves you got a really nice view down there. That's looking down into the Shenandoah Valley, <clears throat> LaRay, Virginia, Stanley. Off in the smoky distance is the Massanutten mountain range. And down that way is the spring. I'll, I'll go down there and get a shot of that too. So, and then this is your, let me back up a little bit. This is your front porch right here. It's a nice, nice stone porch. And at night you can see the, uh, all the lights twinkling and stuff down, down in Luray. Um, and that right there, that's how mice get in. So you've always, You've always got company here at the Rock Spring Cabin. <clears throat> Here's a little uh, pro tip from the School of Hard Knocks. Because <clears throat> my brother and I have been here before overnight. When you come to places like this, <clears throat> bring your own saw. Bring a folding saw. They have saws here, but watch, watch this. You see this sawhorse here? 
they put those metal angle irons on there so when when people saw and the blade hits that metal it dulls the blades up you ever tried sawing big logs with a dull saw it's it's a lot of work so <clears throat> bring your own saw and try to stick to stuff that's you know about that size or that size like that don't don't try and don't try and tackle something like that <clears throat> Something like this is good too. See that? But it would be better if they didn't do that to the saw horses. Their saws would last a lot longer. I don't know. Just a just a helpful hint. All right. Well, here's the spring. Rock spring. Well. There's a rock, and there's the spring. <clears throat> and it's flowing, nice flow, coming out of that pipe. And they've dammed it up here a little bit, so you got maybe, uh, it's, it's two inches deep there, but it's flowing, so there's that. And then some low-class piece of trash did that, look at that. They just left their wine bottle right there. Sure, I'll pick it up and carry it out of the park for you. And then you, you don't need to go any further downhill from this. Just for reference, there's the cabin. It's almost at the same elevation. <clears throat> and then up there is the hut. And the Appalachian Trail is way up there. So. Real nice spot. Two point two miles into my hike, I'm back to the intersection with the Salamander Trail. The elevation here is thirty six hundred feet. That's where I came from, <clears throat> up from the Rock Spring uh, Hut and the Rock Spring Cabin. Over there is where they had the turkey fight earlier, and uh, it, all is quiet now. And we're going to head on up. This takes this takes you almost to Hawksbill Summit. Not quite though. It empties out onto a uh, fire road that goes all the way to the summit, so I'll point that out when we get there. The summit's up around 4,000 feet, so we got about 400 more feet to climb. Out of breath from climbing the summit here. Two point eight miles into my hike, I'm up to thirty nine hundred and ten feet. Uh, I'm not quite to the summit yet, but I stepped out on this little rock outcropping. It's kind of hazy out there today. The summit's over here. You can't see it because of the trees, but uh, that's looking to the west. 
Down there is Stanley and Luray, Virginia. Uh, New Market Gap over there in the Massanutten Range. And the birds left us some white deposits. See that? Over there. Over here. Great big old rock trails back there. Two point nine miles into my hike. I'm, all, I'm just at the intersection of the Salamander Trail and this fire road that goes up to the summit. The elevation here is uh, 3,940 feet, and we're heading up to about 4,000. So let's see. Uh, it's probably another, may, might be another quarter of a mile up to the summit. Wow, out of breath. Climbing through 4,000 feet. Just thought I'd point out that the uh, the ferns are starting to die out up here already. See that? See how they're turning brown? Three point one miles into my hike. The elevation here is uh, four thousand and twenty feet. I'm up near the summits now. Uh, I'll go over there in a few minutes. There's an observation platform. There's the there's the trail that goes up to the summit. That's bird's nest shelter number two. There's the trail back down off the mountain. And it uh, looks like they closed off access to that area there for revegetation. That's a, that's a look to the west. summit of Hogsville. The elevation here is 4,050 feet. This is the highest point in the park. I'm standing on the observation platform.
This is a map of today's hike. The quadrangle name is Big Meadows, 1994, and I hiked to the summit of Hawksbill. Hawksbill Summit is the highest peak in the park, about 4,050 feet. I parked right here at Hawksbill Gap. Now there's two ways to get up to the summit. <clears throat> The short way and the long way. The short way, when you're when you're standing with your back to the road, looking at the trailhead. If you take the trail on the left, that's this one. This takes you up like this to the summit, which is right there. I took the longer way, which starts you you head off to the right, and this is the Appalachian Trail. You get on the Appalachian Trail. And you follow this, the AT southbound, until you get to right here. This is the this is the intersection with the Salamander Trail. So when I got here, the first thing I uh, I continued on along the AT down to the Rock Spring Hut and the Rock Spring Cabin, which are which are right here. Then I came back to the intersection here with the Salamander Trail and came up Salamander to here and then this puts you on a, a gravel service road up to Bird's Nest Shelter number two which is right about there and then from there it's about another 50 yards or so up to the observation platform here at Hawksbill Summit and that says a benchmark elevation 4,050 feet. Then I came back down to where I parked along this lower Hawksbill Trail right there back to my car. Now there's a couple of other interesting hikes in this area I didn't hi highlight it, but there's a dotted line here going down into Timber Hollow. Now this is 100% bushwhack into in, down into Timber Hollow, but you can do that. Uh, it'll be best in the winter time, of course. Also, here's another bushwhack starting here and heading up this way to the summit of Naked Top. There's nothing to see up here because it's covered with trees but it's an interesting bushwhack. You've got to push your way through a lot of uh, thick mountain laurel to get up there though. There's also another way to get up there which is to park here. This is the upper Hawksbill parking lot and you take this trail up and it, run, it dumps onto the gravel service road also and it'll take you up like that. Ended up being four miles and a total ascent of 1,074 feet. And that was the hike for today.